in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the periodic features which we can which we see across the periodic table now in the last video I talked about how you can basically use some rules to figure out the electron configuration of different elements and in this video I want to take a look at some of the different features of different sections of the periodic table so first of all I want to take a look at these two groups group one groups one and two now the elements in groups one and two like to have a structure which is similar to that of the noble gases and uh, the noble gases are the elements located along the, the, the right hand side of the periodic table so from helium all the way to radon and so if we take an example say sodium for example sodium here which has 11 electrons 11 electrons what in what sodium likes to do since this is one of the easiest ways you can form a structure similar an electron configuration similar to that of a noble gas what it does is it loses one electron and so when it loses this one electron it it gains an electronic configuration which is almost identical to that of neon which has 10 electrons so if we imagine um, the electron configuration of sodium, so 11 electrons, that would be 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p6, and then we'd have the 3s1. This 3s orbital you see here, um, the electron located inside it is lost, and it becomes an ion. So Na becomes Na+. Plus because now there's 11 protons and there's only 10 electrons and this electron configuration changes from being 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p6, 3s1 to being um, for Na plus it changes to being 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p6 and no more, free, no more 3s1 and Towards the end of my last video, I explained that you can simplify the um, the electron configuration of an element or anything on or an ion, so so that it takes you less time to write it. And if I was to do do it with this, as I said, you'd use a noble gas and you just add on the additional uh, electrons or orbitals on there. So for this, before sodium is neon, so we'd have the neon in the square brackets neon and e and for regular sodium we'd have 3s1 next to it so ne and then 3s1 whereas for the ion of sodium we'd have the electron configuration literally of just ne and of course we know that now the sodium would be charged though the electron configuration looks like this and when sodium goes about forming ionic bonds with um, with other, uh, other, other molecules or other, other elements, it often does this. It often loses an electron and then it becomes positively charged. And then maybe the other electron, the other element, which is often a group 7 element, uh, gains that electron and then they form an ionic bond. Um, yeah, and these elements in the group in the in the um, these group these elements with the 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 one in group one and two often do this. Whereas where, whereas helium helium may be in the s block, but it's not in group one or two, so it doesn't tend to lose electrons. It doesn't need to do anything. It it, it it's just highly unreactive. Mainly, mainly sits there. So now the transition elements which are in the D block here, not all of these are transition um, metals but some of them are, what they often do is they, um, they lose electrons and by losing electrons they form positive ions and there's many different uses for transition elements but I won't go into that too much in this video. And if we take a look at these elements here, so maybe from, from group 3 to 7 but mainly group 7 what these do is they tend to okay maybe not group 3 but group 7 these ones tend to gain electrons 
and so these will gain electrons so fluorine will gain electrons to get the electron configuration of neon and chlorine will do that and all of these are ones and these ones here tend to form covalent bonds with other elements and you'll probably see that in some future videos and if we take a look now at these elements down here it's a, in an F block a large amount of these elements are radioactive a large amount of them are radioactive and so you wouldn't really want to get too close to them. And so yeah, those are some of the properties which um, which the elements have. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Yeah.